You're listening to To The Spirit Podcast. Hi, friends, and welcome to The Spirit. I'm Beck. And I'm Steph. Hi, Steph. Hello, Becky. Oh, I'm excited once again for our Christmas bonus episode. Guess who's back to bring all the merry fun? The jerky jester, a howling hellion. He who is perpetually on the naughty list, our friend Jason Wicks. This is the best goddamn Christmas podcast from Timbuktu to Portland, Maine, or Portland, (laughs) Oregon, for that matter. Fucking terrible technical. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of drinks and being merry, I think we all have one, right? We have one going? Yeah. Yeah. So everybody listening, get your eggnog, put a little (laughs) something, something in there. All right. Let's ring in the holiday times. All right. Cheers. Chin, chin. All right. Three, two, one, go. Ready? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. (laughs) It's really seltzer waters. (laughs) No, she's got she's got a little hair of the dog in there. I got some vodka. I've been doing some shots before the show to get myself ready. Remember back in the '90s stuff when uh, my mom made up some homemade eggnog and uh, put a little rum up in there. No, she used to make the chocolate. What was no? Yeah, it was eggnog, but she made a chocolate one that had like. Uh, oh yeah, Bailey's. The Bailey's. I but we did an eggnog one time, we and we did the whole bottle, and you said you'll never do it again. You gave me the um. Gold schlagers and I passed out one time. Gold like, schlager. You're like, try this. It was like a triple shot of gold schlager. So think of three shots at once, and I drank it all, and I sat there. I was like, I don't feel good. <laughs> That's what she said about the eggnog. And then I fell asleep. Three hours later, my dad was there to pick me up. <laughs> gold schlager was my weapon. And that was a uh, pre aftershock. I was gonna say aftershock too, with little crystals. <laughs> oh yeah, never had that. What's that? What was it's it got... like a peppermint type of thing with C- cinnamon, cinnamon with rock candy inside the bottle? Wow, yeah, it had yeah. crystals. Yeah, we got a Jason significant other pretty wasted on that at one time. <laughs> yeah, it ended. Rep- it, well, it didn't end. It, it the middle of it was her in the bathtub going, "What's going on?" Yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> You got to bring Christmas in with a little uh, holiday spirits for the spirits. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into this, guys. Before we begin, people absolutely loved Steph's uh, drunken pedo zombie. <laughs> I don't like being called a pedo. I start feeling weird about that now. Well, that's okay. Because <laughs> we're going to reassign it. We're, we're going to reassign that uh, today. You will now be known as former <laughs> the, the former drunken pedo zombie is now zombie Santa stuff. So if yeah. I was a zombie, you're zombie Santa stuff, and I'm Santa. It's like, well, you, you <sighs> go to <sighs> 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 you, you you work at malls now, and you know you you're, you're one of those Santas where you work at the mall. Right. <laughs> but you're a yeah. zombie. What do you want for Christmas? <laughs> That's it. You got it. All right. Uh, I'm going to sign Jason, and then Jason can assign me. So, Jason, you're going to be salty Mrs. Claus. If only Santa would just stop hanging out with the elves and... <laughs> yes. You know, yes. You know, I'm giving him come hither eyes, and he doesn't really care about me. I mean, when I take my pants down, bats come flying out. <laughs> Yeah, yes. and, and uh, you're going to be evil elf Bex. Okay. okay. And at Go any ahead. time during this, at, at any time, anybody could say, okay, what do you think evil elf Bex or zombie Santa stuff? And you have to answer as your persona. Well, let's jump into some questions and reminisce of days of yore. What are your favorite Christmas horror movies and TV shows? Let's start with horror movies first that are Christmassy. Uh... I guess the only one I can think of is Silent Night, Deadly Night, but it's not necessarily scary because the dude looks like one of the fraternity guy from fucking Revenge of the Nerds, and he just has like a loose Santa beard that's hanging off his face, and he looks like he's 20, so it's not particularly scary, but it's okay. 
you know, there's like, well, 10 I was going to actually mention this movie myself. Cause I remember as a kid, like celebrating Christmas and the advertisements for this movie would come on. And I was terrified of the commercials. I've never seen the movie actually at all, but it was one of those things where the commercials for it seemed so scary and, and very inappropriate <laughs> for the time period. <laughs> Everything was inappropriate back then. If we're going 80s, I got to go with gremlins. Now, technically, I mean, he did get a gremlin for Christmas from his dad. I know it's not totally horrifying, but it is. Was gremlins released during Christmas time? Might have been. I feel like it was for some reason. I mean, he gets him a little mogwai for Christmas. Yeah, it was a Christmas story somewhat. For like a scarier modern, I have Krampus, of course. I've never seen that, man. I know I've never seen Krampus. I feel like when it comes to dark movies for Christmas, I think I stayed away. <laughs> you don't really think about that during Christmas, but eventually you end up seeing them at a different time. The TV shows, I remember Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt. And uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, it was good. Yeah, and they had one called All Through the House. And basically the radio's on and this woman, she kills her husband for money or something and the daughter's in the house and on the radio you hear that somebody escaped from the mental asylum and he's dressed as Santa and he's fucking killing everybody leaving bodies along his trail and the whole thing is the mom is trying to keep the killer Santa out of the house and at the end she's at the top of the stairs and the daughter like comes into view and she's like mommy look 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 who I found and the mom's like what and it's the Santa. She she's holding the Santa's hand, and he just looks at the mommy. Eh, you know, he oh, was God. scary too. I remember him. He was very scary for that time. <laughs> he, was, he had really rotted teeth. If you remember, yeah, he was all fucked up. But they they made him a bit goofy because he makes goofy noises, like when he falls or he's about to slip and fall. It's like ah, you know, it's like. <laughs> but then again, that's that's fun. And the the other one is I don't think many people have seen this. Because I used to stay up, you know, I'm a vampire and I would stay up till like 2 a.m. And uh, Tales of the Dark Side would come on around 2 a.m. And there was one called Seasons of Belief. And these, I think it's grandparents are talking to their grandkids about the grither. And you can't say his name because if you do, every time you say his name, he'll come closer to your house. And then by the end, two large animatronic hands come and grab the heads of the grandparents and crack their necks and then the hands retract and the kids are just like freaked out and i remember that oh good memory yeah i don't remember a lot back then but i know that the one movie i guess that would come on every christmas was the christmas carol with george c scott yeah and uh that was to me very frightening as a kid it was very it seemed very long it seemed like you'd ignore it for a while and it would like five hours later it's still be on tv (laughs) Mm -hmm. but (laughs) But it was always that scene where that one ghost opens up his cloak and the two kids are in there. The future. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but that's a movie. You got to hit us with a TV show. I know, but I have, I still was back in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Zombie Santa stuff is <clears throat> TV show feeling the vodka. <laughs> Unholy Night was the name of the episode by American Horror Story. Asylum which I'm kind of a fan. There were some seasons I didn't really like, but it was a murderous Santa that wreaks havoc on Briarcliff and the killer Santa was portrayed by Ian McSheen and he did a pretty good job. He was a little frightening. That's a (laughs) a good choice. Thank you. Your choice is a good choice and him playing Santa is a great choice too because he's so gruff and like... Ian McShane, you said? Yeah, he's like a... He looks like a dirty bastard. He's an awesome (laughs) actor though. He was in Jesus of Nazareth. He played Judas. Okay, Steph's throwing me off with her Jesus of Nazareth. Triggering me. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go back the old days let's float on back since we're already there we're kind of there we're talking about 80s shows and movies yeah listening to the radio for (laughs) school closings let's talk about the excitement and then the letdowns and what we would do after to celebrate well mine was a bit tricky because i didn't go to a public school i went to a catholic school so when you would be glued to the radio and they would go through all the public schools and then they would do the parochial schools and they weren't hand in hand so if a lot of the public schools are off we weren't so it was kind of rare when school got canceled but when it did it was like suddenly you fly out of the bed you know you'd call up your friends i I think we were playing turbo graphics at the time they'd all come over and play turbo graphics and it was just party time yeah i went to catholic school also during my childhood and you are exactly right they never freaking closed it was infuriating 
Yes. And it seemed like it was always come down to the nun that ran the school, who to me as a child, she looked like George C. Scott. They all we were did. talking about him earlier. I know she looked like George C. Scott. <laughs> and they're about a hundred years old, all of them. Yeah. In one time, everyone was closed. Every single school is closed, but St. Cecilia's was open. And Jessica, my sister, took the bus and the bus slid off the road and landed in a ditch. Oh, holy crap. And yes. Everyone was so angry. And then they started closing a bit after that. I know those times. And in like, and I used to walk to my bus stop in the morning at like five in the morning with like snow beating at your face and your bare legs because the girls had to wear the skirts without anything underneath it. Yep. You weren't allowed to wear pants underneath your skirt. And that was a weird rule. And I got in trouble at school one day because George C. Scott, the nun George C. Scott, came up to me <laughs> and, sh and shook me violently. And I was like, why are you doing this? And she's like, because you wore pants underneath your jumper. I was like, what are you talking about? Because I didn't. And it was actually Jessica. I took the heat for Jessica. They thought it was my sister because you had to sneak them in and take them off really quick. But the guys could wear pants when we did have a school closing though like i remember just having so much fun on those days or at least sleeping in for a while and then making tunnels out in the front of my driveway where like the plow would <laughs> pile up snow oh yeah. yeah like igloos well i had a friend that had like the little like to make igloos they had like that rectangle shaped yep. thing pack you know to pack oh, the snow i never had that make... i know it didn't seem like whoever had those were like rich or something i don't yeah. know because i never had it but my neighbor had it so we would try to make forts or whatever we could with those. But I had a, a incident where school was closed and my dad was getting ready to go to work. And I decided to go play in the big pile of snow at the edge of my driveway near the road next to the mailbox. So I start making this awesome tunnel and my dad's pulling out for work. He's like, I don't want you in there because uh, cars driving by, if they ever skid off the road, they could just like crash right into you or. Something bad could happen. When I leave, I want you to go inside the house. And I didn't. I stayed. And then uh, the tunnel collapsed on me while I was in there. And I got stuck. And I think just my <laughs> feet were sticking out. And weirdly, the dog across the street, which was Alaskan Husky Dog, yeah. ran over and dug me out. Wow. <laughs> and I got out. Yeah, he like pulled me out. Saved your life. He pretty much, I mean, like, I was in a panic state. I don't know if I would have died or anything, but I couldn't get myself out. It was pretty weighted. Do you ever make really elaborate tunnels and giant piles of snow? Oh, yeah. It was great. There was yeah. always a room where you hung out. I always remember building the, the big room where everyone would just hang out, and there would always be an entrance and an exit tunnel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so what would evil elf Bex do with her day off from making toys at Santa's factory? If you listen to the radio and it said Santa's workshop as the day off today, what would evil elf Bex do with that day? I would watch the, the MTV. <laughs> watch that uh, man eater. That, that was your jam? She has not drank anything. She can't pronounce Daryl Holland. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if she drank, it'd be, you know, she, it'd be Give better. We shot. Will you give me a wee shot? Are we doing a shot <laughs> now? Gonna have to take it right out of the do a shot All right, let's do a shot, All everybody. Right. Everybody right. listening, grab your eggnog. Let's do it. You have it in your cup. Well, give, give, give me yeah, two I minutes. Okay, just, just a little splash. And there. Right. Let me smell that. I smell it, baby. It's <laughs> glorious. <laughs> Woo <-hoo>! oh, <laughs> yeah. I have a little yeah. something. We're, we're talking about yesteryear. So what, what's your favorite Christmas memory? So we'll start with uh, Steph. What's your favorite, ultimate favorite Christmas memory? Oh, like presents, I whatever. I don't know, really, to say what it is. Because there's so many. I have a collection of moments, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think it really was just the belief in Santa, thinking that he was bringing this stuff. It seems so magical to me. There's, you know, moments where... I couldn't sleep on Christmas night. I don't know if you could. Uh, it was impossible. I, yeah, I could not sleep. It seemed like the most mystical night of the year for a child, like so special, like and also scary because of the thought of that he's coming would scare the crap out of me. Every noise made me think that he was there, you know, like every little crack or, you know, how like houses when they have heat going on and it's cold outside would make pops and noises. Yeah. So that to me is the most special moments. Just seeing the Christmas tree. I like I, I was telling Beck, I would 
literally camp out underneath the Christmas tree during the, the school week. Just look up at the lights. Just seems so amazing. But I'm fond of those memories. What would zombie Santa Steph want for Christmas back then? You want, oh, 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 back then? <laughs> well, that erases zombie Santa stuff. <laughs> well, whatever. What would the zombie Santa stuff want for Christmas? Me want die. <laughs> <laughs> But you're already dead. You're a zombie. <laughs> you die again. This is turning very depressing. <laughs> Christmas depressing. I need to give zombie Santa stuff some antidepressants. <laughs> Me and Krampus, best friends. Do you guys hang out at the pub together or something? <laughs> we meet each other at night in our dreams. Best <laughs> friends. What the fuck? <laughs> Do zombies even have dreams? They don't sleep. This one does. <laughs> Zombie Santa just flew out the window, delivers some more rotten toys to the kids. Um, so how about you, Bex? What's your favorite Christmas memory? Favorite Christmas memory? A lot of the same as stuff. I actually, I used to get really into just looking at Christmas trees at people's houses. I don't know what it was. It made me happy. Some of my friends had those little bubbler lights on their Christmas trees. What are bu- bubbler lights? They oh, looked never... like little lava lamps, sort of like little mini bubbler. Wow. They, no, they I don't remember cool. that. You don't remember those? No. They're really expensive for the string. Every string was like very expensive. Wow. Nobody on the north side had those. I never had the one. Nor- the north? <laughs> yeah, the north side. <laughs> north side of Syracuse. Uh, Santa was scared to come there. (laughs) So I just would admire people's trees and decorations and see whose was overly gaudy, whose looked like a magical fairy tale. It was always the lights and the ambiance and the decorations. Yes, I think that's really was for me too. Do you remember tinsel? We used to put tinsel on the trees. They don't do that anymore. Or making Uh, the popcorn strands. Oh yeah, popcorn strands. took a lot of work. (laughs) One time our cat ate some of the tinsel and we had to pull it out of its butt. It was sticking out of its butt. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that shit was dangerous man remember the icicle stuff it looked like angel hair they called it angel hair i think it was like really oh fine it was thin glass shards of hair like fiberglass essentially that you're putting all over your tree oh, i don't remember that at all that's because it went in and out real quick because it was so deadly yeah i don't remember that <laughs> i remember we had a f- one year my dad hurt his back really bad he was in the hospital during christmas we never picked up our christmas tree so we used like a fake tree that we had in our storage that was only like four feet high which sucks when you're a kid when your christmas tree is basically shorter than you are and then (laughs) it was frosted too had fake frost oh i hated that stuff yeah so my mom put it on a table to make it look bigger and then put all the presents underneath the table frosted trees were like frosted jeans (laughs) <laughs> was that what they were called i don't know like stonewash Frost- stonewash <laughs> stonewash yeah yeah what about you jason what was your favorite memory uh, it's fucking glorious man it's fucking it's it was one of the best days of my life i equate it to when syracuse basketball won the national championship in 2003 uh maybe the first date with my girl like it's it's up there so the talk of the town was you know i think this is like 82 or 83 and everybody was getting Atari. You know, all of us kids would be hanging out going, oh, we're going to get Atari. I can't, you know, I can't wait. So we do all the presents. And I know that Atari came in a big ass box. And there was one present left on the tree. And it was about the size of a DVD case. And I was a little depressed, but I was thankful. You know, my parents always put on a good Christmas for us kids. So my mom goes, um, here, Jay, this is the last present. This is for you. And I grab it. You know, I'm shaking it up and everything. I like to shake, see if there's any parts, which meant toys or whatever. And, you know, I can hear something in there and I, I tear a little bit off of the present and I can see a cartoon frog dude. And then I, I look up and I'm like, is that fucking Frogger? And then I look over my right shoulder and my dad, cigarette in mouth, right? Tired as fuck, cigarette in mouth, comes walking in with a big ass box. And I fucking knew it was Atari. And it, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and it was Atari and it was great. So I had Frogger and, and um, uh, it came with, uh, I think, uh, Space Invaders or Combat or something. But um, yeah, there was nothing like that. It was like it was just like Christmas Story when all the presents were done and Ralphie wanted his BB gun. And then the dad goes, oh, what's that over there? And it was the BB gun. It was just like that. It was great. Wow. Yeah. I think parents like to torture their kids during Christmas. It's like one of their pastimes. <laughs> torture them? 
Yeah, like sustaining a present, you know, like holding off on a present to the last minute to oh. torture them. Or telling them about Krampus or <laughs> the right. scary people. <laughs> right. My favorite uh, Atari game was Snoopy Barnstorming. Did you have that one? Um, I remember Barnstorming. I don't know if there was a Snoopy, but maybe it was. But yeah, you're just you're just you're in a like a World War One plane and you're going up and down through the barn and you got to go over yes, the antenna. That's Snoopy. Yeah, that's Snoopy Barnstorming. Fantastic game. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it was really good for I think the time. Uh, can we get back on track, Zombie Santa? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about our best sledding stories. And I'm going to start with this one. It's not necessarily the best, but it definitely made a mark, literally. School was canceled. It was one of those days. And my friends were like, come on, we're going to go sledding up at the college. And so we went to the college hill. And it just happened to be that day. And maybe you guys remember this day. Is this at Lemoyne? Yeah. But this was a day where it was just pure ice. Everything was just pure ice. It was the perfect storm. Normally, the college kids up at LeMoyne would take their lunch trays and actually go down the hill on their ass. It was makeshift. It was quick. They just grabbed their, their trays. It was the 93 storm. No, no. This was in the 80s. Yeah, we, we went and we brought our sleds and I had snow pants on. And you know how those are like... Uh, the material on those they're what <laughs> marshmallowy well yeah they're marshmallow but they're kind of like i don't know what the material is on the outside it kind of zit 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 when you walk <laughs> you know and mm -hmm. you didn't even need a sled it was so damn icy that you could just sit with your snow pants on and just fly down the hill so i remember at the very bottom of the hill there was a giant snowbank where the plows had plowed the snow into giant snowbank formations and that was pure ice so essentially if you were flying fast enough and you hit that it was a ramp into the parking lot and i didn't want to go scared because i was seeing how fast everyone was going and my friend's older brother was like come on beck i'll catch you you won't go flying over i'll catch you so i was like okay i trusted him i thought he's gonna catch me at the bottom and I start sliding. I'm gaining momentum. I'm going really fast. I was going so fast that I put my cloth mittens down and they got snagged on the snow, which inevitably led me to be on my belly now. So now I'm on my belly going like 100 miles an hour down this hill with no control. And he's standing right there. He's going to catch me. And what does he do? He steps to the side. My face goes right into that ice. Bam. <laughs> oh, my God. And we survived. And <laughs> we survived. It was my first bloody nose. I had blood pouring out of my face. My eye was black and blue. I mean, it, well, not right away. It swelled up, but my eye swelled shut. My brother was so scared. It was the first time I knew he loved me because he put my butt on a sled and drug me all the way home. <laughs> and he was like so scared. He's like, I'll get you home. So he <laughs> pulled me all the way home. It was horrifying, but I did it. And it made me the warrior that I am today. <laughs> yeah. Sledding stories. What about? Do you remember the big ice storm back in the eighties that lasted like two weeks? That seemed like everywhere was like a sheet of ice. <laughs> I don't remember a fucking thing, man. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember it, and we were using those runner sleds. Do you know what, what I'm talking about? Yeah, the ones with uh, they that they like the... if they ran over your leg, you thought it would cut it right off because it was made out of metal. Yeah, it was like the wooden seat, you know, which was long, and then. The rails were like metal. Yeah, what were those called? I would call them a run. I don't know, a runner sled, but yeah. And they had a little steering mechanism for your feet. Yes. On the end of it or the front of it. And because everything was frozen, we had all this flexible flyers. Flexible flyer. Okay. Yeah. So all the snow basically was about a foot deep and then it rained. And then the rain that saturated the snow froze. So it was like this really awesome. Ice. Like sheet of ice everywhere and school was closed and my neighbor across the street, she's like, let's go sledding. And from her backyard to another person's backyard that joined together down to this mechanic shop that was around the corner, we're like, let's just get on this, you know, the sled and figure out where we're going to end up. And they basically just let gravity take us down the hill. So we went through her backyard they steered around any trees or any obstacles through the neighbor's next yard. And then all of a sudden we went to the steep drop behind this mechanic shop, which is present day is just a gas station. 
just seems like you're flying forever on this sled. Well, I mean, it's not, it probably didn't take long, but it, you know, you're passing through different borders or whatever. <laughs> not like it's a long, long time, but it's a neighbor. And then, you know, another neighbor at a gas up. station, you stopped off at Dunkin' Donuts all the way. <laughs> but when we arrived at the bottom, cause we were like four kids on a sled and we were all leaned back for some reason, like we we're laying on each other, leaning back. And we kind of opened our eyes after the ride stopped and there was this weird pipe that was right above us. So we kind of did this limbo. It was like we opened our eyes and all of a sudden there's this big pipe coming out of the ground. It looked like an exhaust pipe from a big old car and we we're underneath it, but it was very close to the ground. And we're like, how the heck did we slide underneath this thing and not know it and not get hurt? Because all we had to do is just raise up a bit. One of us would have been knocked out. <laughs> Where did this come from? I think it's because it was a mechanic's place you know like a garage that they had a bunch of junk in the back below the hill that we slid down oh that it was just sticking out it was a fun ride but it was very dangerous <laughs> and i remember having to climb our way out of there so everything is ice like a sheet of ice and it's like two feet deep underneath that sheet of ice because the top layer froze but in between was kind of hollow and so mm. if you would go right through and go right yeah if you w- found a weak point you'd trip and fall and then your knee would go through it. And I remember having like a bruise, the shape of a ring around my knee from falling into the ice all day long that day. (laughs) There's a lot of memories that were nondescript that were just fun. Right. But what, what sticks out is I saw a kid get fucked up and then I saved the kid's life. So the fucked up kid, you know, we would sled on cemetery Hill off of Lodi street and we would build a ramp somebody would always build a ramp and this kid had already gone down the hill and he was walking up and i see this one dude like just flying down the hill and he's about to go on the ramp and all of a sudden this kid the kid that already went down stands up at the exact moment that the dude collides with him and this kid went flying like 30 feet you know it was crazy but he he got up it was the 80s we were fine um (laughs) and when i saved the kid's life it was cemetery hill because there were fucking gravestones everywhere you know and they cleared out a path to go off the ramp and all that but i was walking up the hill and i noticed this little kid going down the hill on the sled and he's heading right for a fucking like huge headstone and i grabbed him and yanked him off at the exact time that the sled crashed into the headstone and like just shattered you know, oh. <laughs> yeah. So that fucking kid better hooked me up with some good Yuletide uh, luck, you know? Yeah, like a scratch off that you win in the stocking. What would you want kids to leave you if you were Santa? You know how you, you leave like milk and cookies? Mm-hmm. So Beck, if you were Santa, what would you want the kid to leave you? I would like an Entenmann's cheese Danish and a Gatorade because, you know, electrolytes. Hmm. Not a bad choice if you're going around all night. No, you got to stay hydrated. You're going around the whole world. What about you, uh, zombie Santa stuff? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Me want milk and cookies. Chocolate chip cookies. (laughs) Me like I ate last night too. Milk and cookies? Yes. (laughs) Any particular kind? Just chocolate chip? or Betty Crocker. (laughs) Does Betty Crocker still exist? I know. At Aldi, she exists. <laughs> I thought that was something you'd have to make homemade. Oh, How come I'm the only one that goes to character and no one else is? <laughs> because yours is the best. <laughs> yeah. I sound like Cookie Monster. <laughs> Salty Mrs. Claus has to answer what she would want. You Let answer me. now, Jason. No, stop. <laughs> well... Seeing Santa doesn't hook up with Mrs. Santa Claus anymore. You know, I, I guess I would say uh, leave the Atari on so I can get a fuck game in. And, um, you know, espresso martini would be nice for Mrs. Salty Santa Claus. And um, I would also ask them to leave me some Little Debbie jelly cream pies. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I fucking... We, we got, <laughs> I was at the store yesterday and I see that they had Little Debbie jelly cream pies. They're, they just look like, they're like these round little chocolate covered things with like um, vanilla and a little touch of um, jelly or whatever. Dude, I fucking ate like eight of them yesterday. I mean, I'm a fucking slob. You should call, my new name's going to be Jason Pig because I'm going to turn into a fat fucking <laughs> pig. <laughs> 
Tis the season, man. Tis the season. <clears throat> yeah, those are the best though. I, I haven't seen those in I haven't seen those in years and I saucing it today. <laughs> They're Santa's favorite too, but I can't get him in the bedroom. I don't know what his problem is. He hangs out with the goddamn else all the time. <laughs> I even got a negligee. He doesn't give a flying fuck. He's just, you know, partying with the mates. Christmas song you hate the most. Like, oh, oh, my God. The most. Oh, my God. Oh, I have such strong feelings about this. You have no idea. I don't have anything to beatbox like the Halloween special, but I'm going to do one right now, okay? And you'll know what it fucking is. Okay, ready? Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> It's that fucking terrible Paul McCartney fucking in wings. Yes. Wonderful oh. Christmas time. Beer, oh. beer, 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 beer. It makes me want to murder when I hear that song. I can't. Wow. We, I would have thought it would have been something else. When we're at the Christmas breakfast and I hear that song, change it. <laughs> I can't stand it. We, we know that John was the better writer in the Beatles. He was writing Imagine and Paul McCartney was writing beer, 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 beer. <laughs> It's just so bizarre and crazy. I really, I don't hate much things in this world, but I fucking hate that song. Yeah. He has a, definitely a hatred oh, for that. God. I get it. I get it. What's yours? Mine is Feliz Navidad. Can't stand it. Really? It's just too, it's happy when you first hear it, but then after a while, it's like a torture song to me. I don't know. It's not even nice sounding, it, you know, like beautiful. It's kind of cheerful. It's Feliz cheerful, do, 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 but it's so repetitive. It sounds like if you're stuck in an elevator, you'd kill yourself type music to me. I don't know. Don't like I, it. I can wow. see that. Yeah. It's my mom's favorite song. She'll be happy to hear this when she listens to the podcast. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. She's like, no, it's not. It's awesome. <laughs> the Syracuse accent. It's awesome. Yeah. I have a scenario or two, and we'll do one right now. Uh, so Steph and I are in line uh, with the velvet rope at a club or a rave, and evil elf Becca is giving the uh, bouncer a hard time, swearing at him and blah, 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 and we got to calm her down. She doesn't have an ID. She's 161 years old, but you don't need an ID. <laughs> all right. Oh, God, this line is so fucking long. Oh, okay, here we go. Right, We're at the front of the, with the bouncer. Uh, here's my ID. Evil elf back. Where's your ID? What's going on? Oh, I don't need a freaking ID. I'm 160 years old. Listen here, you son of a bitch. Let me in. I've got the white hairs. <laughs> I'm as ancient as your ancestors. You're going to be on the naughty list, you motherfucker. Let me in. <laughs> DJ Rap is going to be on soon, man. we got to get in this club, man. Well, like, What's your problem with this fucking bouncer? What's going on? He's a little bit jerky, but you know. I'm just going to whack him in the nads and head on in underneath. We'll just, we'll hide you under our cloak like George C. Scott with the two kids. And we'll just, <laughs> we'll sneak you in. I think that's that'll be fine. Okay, I'll well. get in. <laughs> okay, we're fine. We're in. <laughs> For $56,280, would you rock Christmas tree tinsel for hair and have fingernails that light up like Christmas lights for 10 years? Uh, yeah, I would do that. I think so. I, I would do that. We can we can all go on vacation and we can go to Ibiza and fucking party <laughs> with all the, you know, with all the lug heads. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have that really great tinsel hair it'll be dude, wonderful no, raves won't be a problem oh, no, ra i'll be right in. i'll be the dude doing the the finger gloves for the people who are fucked up and they just want a little light show with my <laughs> yes. Nails. Yes. <laughs> all right all right yeah, that's a uh, no yeah no problem there yeah great for 3.6 mm -hmm. million dollars that's a lot of money would you live in a gingerbread house completely furnished with candy, such as gumdrops and candy canes for the rest of your life? That's not really weatherproof, is it? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, maybe the icing on it might give you a few years. Just think of it this way. If if, it, if the weather takes it away, it's gone. You're, you you're did just, what you're supposed to do. You got your money. That's true. And that's 3.6 mil. Yeah. Well, you know, there are things such as pneumonia. You know, if the, if the roof... <laughs> If the roof collapses on me and it's all wet and soggy, I would still try it anyway, because then we again, we'd all go to Ibiza and we'd go party and all that and go to Tokyo and wherever else. And yeah, yep. I would do it. I would I would take one for the team and, you know, you, you just uh, just take my Ivy with me and, you know, my shock paddles. If, if I start to die, you can shock me back to life. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you have to battle eight reindeer with rabies. You must choose oh only one weapon right choose only one weapon it's either a candy cane filed into a prison shiv okay a licorice whip or a stale fruit cake what would you use i'm going with the shiv man because if they jumped on me i would just that'd be one done and i would just one though oh it would break off and shit yeah it would be it that would be it fruit cake maybe you could make crumbs and they would just get distracted and eat it oh i never thought of that Christmas lights, he could strangle those son of a bitches. What but Christmas lights. <laughs> oh, wait, they're not there. Oh, it was no, a candy cane and a licorice yeah. whip. Jason, you have to battle a mob of 1,000 furious elves. You must choose only one a string of Christmas tree lights. Yeah. Christmas cookies filled with X Lax. Mm-hmm. Or a Christmas stocking filled with Hershey's kisses. <laughs> I'll go with the X Lax because I'll play some I'll play some dancing music like Stardust music sounds better with you and we'll start dancing and I'll pass out the cookies and by the time the song's over they're all running towards the toilet and <laughs> that's good then I can get out of there and you know escape yeah I never thought you would have picked that one I would have no. myself went for the stocking filled with Hershey kisses I would have went for the the stream of lights well all three of us we would have all taken different things yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I would be whipping my stocking around like it was a pillowcase full of rocks, you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but they're 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 you know they they might dance around, you know they're they're strange. <laughs> they might that's true. They might go yep. oh music and then start dancing and then I'll you know I'll pass out everything for three hundred and thirty two thousand nine hundred and sixty seven dollars. You got to go to the mall, all right, and you got to sit there, and you have to do this to twenty kids, okay, with parents. If you see a little kid holding the hand of a parent, you have to stop them, go up to them and point at the kid and go, do you know that Santa's not real? And this right here, your your mom is Santa. Do you know that? Would you do oh. that? Oh, wait, how much do I get? How much do I get for this? $332,967. And I only have to mess with 20 kids? Tw- yeah, you have to tell them. You have to break. Yeah, you have to tell them that Santa's not real and that their parent right there is the one that's given the presents. 20 is a lot, though. 20 is actually kind of a lot. Okay, it's not a lot of money. Let's say 10. Let's say 10 kids. 10 kids. Okay. The parents will straighten them out after, like, no, there's a Santa. Oh, yeah, that that lady was crazy. Yeah, I'll do it. Hell yeah, I'd do it. (laughs) Yes, I would do it. And I'd go really quick through the line. You might people. (laughs) (laughs) Might get kicked in the shins a few times by little kids. Yeah. (laughs) No, he's real. Eh. I do it as <laughs> Beck the angry elf too. The I like listen here. Oh, that that just <laughs> that went was, to like a New, New York Yorkie. accent. <laughs> listen here, Sonny. Let me tell you something. I am from the North Pole. Uh, okay, yeah, I would do it. I would totally do it. Okay, yeah, that's a good good little bit amount of money there. Okay, so Steffi for three million eight hundred and thirty two thousand six hundred and twenty one dollars the week before. And the week after Christmas, so that that two week period, okay, up until New Year's, twenty four hours a day, all you're hearing in your head is bam, 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 wonderful Christmas time, bam, 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 and there's no, it's not the whole song, it's just bam, 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 wonderful Christmas time, over and over and over. What's the what's the length of time again? Three weeks. Two weeks. The the week before. Oh, do that. Oh, do that. I would do it. Yeah. No, I can deal with that for two weeks. Yeah, for two weeks, I could deal with that. I couldn't do it. Man. Yeah, I just tell myself every day I'm gonna be rich. I'm gonna be rich. Yeah, and that would be it. You were like, "This is the song that made me rich." Yeah, you would love that song later. You'd be like, "I'm very fond of this song." Or, or we'd come and visit Steffi, and we would go, "Steffi, let's go to the arcade. Let's go get some some burgers." And she would just be going, "Wonderful Christmas time." <laughs> 
couldn't break me from it, I'd be completely. Could, yeah, you'd be fucked up, you know. <laughs> Could be possible. It looks like we got a caller on the line. Everybody, you ready? Hi, caller. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, hi, this is Kat, and I'm calling from the living room. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's your question today? Uh, yeah, my question is, uh, it's actually for Salty Mrs. Claus. Okay. Um, for the whole month of December, would you rather listen to Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You or Jingle Bells on repeat? For the whole month of December, right? For the whole month of December on repeat. Thank you, caller. Well, the other song I say I, I hate is... Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas, so I wouldn't pick that one, but <laughs> I would pick Jingle Bells, and I would stand in the doorway of the bedroom trying to entice Santa, and I would shake some Jingle Bells, and I'd say, come on, big boy, let's go. <laughs> We're not getting any younger. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Santa. I'm going to divorce his ass. I'm going to divorce one of the elves. Steph, yes. Did you ever make Christmas lists of the presents that you wanted, and what was your method? Okay, I think for a while, but even before Christmas, we would get the catalogs, like Sears catalog or J.C. Penney catalog, in the mail, and I would just randomly make lists based off the catalog. Now, of course, they had stuff in that catalog that was way out of my parents' price range. It'd be like a one of those cars that you could drive as a kid. Did you ever see that? One yeah, page yeah. with the kid driving the car. The electric cars that were like $300 yeah. when you're Oh, old. those were, were so great crazy. looking. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. And I would be like, that's what I want. Or they had something that looked like a, you know, a motorcycle even, you know, look like a, like a police officer's one. Yeah. Like it was chips or something. And I remember I picked out, I said, mom, this is what I want. It was like a chips, the show chips. Yeah. If yeah. anyone recognized that. But it was a real electric motorcycle, but what she got me was the big wheel. Hey, well, the big wheels yeah. are pretty good, though. And that was fun, and I would wipe out at the end of my driveway because I had a brake on oh, it. Oh, I was going to say, do... if it has a brake, it is even better. Yeah, it was a good big wheel. It had On the handlebars, it had like that, what do you call that? The tassel? The tassel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about you, Jason? My method to making the list is first have a shot. So everybody grab your eggnog okay. and do a shot. Okay, ready? <laughs> three two one <laughs> blast off okay oh my god uh my method i would always put the thing i really wanted at the end so i would lead mm. it up it'd be like you know matchbox car and a transformer and then it would be like nintendo i didn't want to freak santa out at the get-go like a nintendo right away because then what follows after that i would always just kind of sneakily put my big present towards the bottom yeah oh okay that's a good method yeah good method can't freak out well, santa he's got a you know he's fucking under stress and you know he's on fucking adderall and everything <laughs> since we're there what was everyone's favorite christmas present that they've got jason was yours the atari mine was the atari yeah by far i can't even remember any anything else really i mean my parents when we started getting into the teens would give me money and I would take the bus and go to like Kitty City. Yeah. One time in 1989, I went and got uh, a Turbo Graphics, and my mom's like, "Don't open it. You can't open it." And then, <laughs> fast forward two hours later, she opens up my door, and I'm there with like three friends, fucking playing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I totally forgot about Kitty City. Where was Kitty City? I went to one in Shopping Town Mall before, I think. Yeah, Toys R Us, Kitty City. Boy, he just brought me back. Okay. Fluff so, and stuff. Fluff and stuff. I remember oh, wow. that. That was the place. That's where fluff I used to get my stuff. garbage pail kids. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. you could get all your stickers And there. stickers. Yeah. Hell yeah. The puffy stickers. Yeah. Smelly puffy stickers. <laughs> Wasn't it called puff and stuff or was no, it, it was, fluff it and was stuff? fluff and stuff. And okay. you could get records there, but they would have to order them for you. What's your worst present, everyone? Jason, we'll start with you again. Okay. This is for my brother. I gave him the worst present ever, okay? So I was about 10, and he was about 6. And my parents didn't know about this, but I went outside and grabbed a piece of coal and put it in a box, and I wrapped it up, and I wrote to Josh from Santa. So he gets the present, and he opens it up, and then he starts crying. And my mom is looking around like, what the hell is going on? And she grabs his present, and I left a note in there saying, you get nothing, love Santa. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was the worst gif I ever gave. He still gives me shit about it. And then my mom read it and came over and slapped me across the face. Oh, oh my God. God. All right. I have a question. Where did you find a piece of coal? Did you get I it from like the grill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was coal or if it was the shit that they would put on the driveway, like that tar type of like a chunk. <laughs> That's funny. That's even better. That's you get nothing. <laughs> he was fucking but... shattered, dude. He was he was so fucking shattered. It was great. I love it. I guess the worst gift would be like in Christmas Story when Ralphie and Randy got socks like i would get socks and just throw them over my shoulder like ralph and randy if it's not a fucking toy fuck off okay back then yeah you gotta give me a toy you know but now socks and underwear is like oh my god it's gold it's true oh never enough (laughs) never enough what was your worst gift stuff well i have a few it's just like the little things that you'd get and you go what the hell is this and i didn't ask for this it would be like the little handheld game with the silver BB in it. Oh, and you yeah. have to like go through a maze or something. Yes. Uh, yeah. Those type of things would be like a stocking stuffer or like a Polly Pocket was probably one of the worst gifts. I didn't understand it. It was like some sort of a tiny doll that was in this little compact thing, yeah. like a women's compact. And you'd open it up and it's supposed to be like this little environment that they live in. But it was so boring and the worst thing ever it was really the worst thing ever. And besides sea monkeys, which never worked out. No, they never did. They always died. And I always spilled them on the floor. I yeah, always got knocked over. They were never going to make it. Yeah. I mean, I had a love-hate relationship with those little games, though. Yeah. I, I kind of weirdly loved the little water games that you'd use your thumb and squirt it up to get yes. the rings on. And then the paddles with the ball. You know, you'd sit there and hit the ball with the paddle with the rubber band it's attached. And then, like, tops and jacks. I used to weirdly like that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, or dice. Yeah. But things I hated, Barbie dolls or dolls in general. I just was not a doll person. I didn't like even He-Man dolls or any of those type of dolls. I just, I guess I didn't have the imagination enough to play with dolls. It just wasn't exciting for me. I'd rather have like a basketball or something. And books. You give me a book. I'd be like, are you serious right now? You want me to read this? I only like books that had really awesome pictures in it. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you're a dumbass. I loved sharks as a kid. I wanted everything sharks. So if it didn't have pictures, I didn't want to know nothing about it. Yeah. So one time, not too long ago, like five, six years ago, I'm opening up a present. And before I can even see what the present is, some scissors falls out of the present. And I go, what the what the hell is this? And my mom goes, oh, that's where they went. <laughs> she, <laughs> <laughs> she wrapped my present with the scissors in it. Right? Did she have a few drinks? <laughs> She might have had a few glasses of wine. Then. Yeah, I know. I would well, never want your mother to be a surgeon because she would be the type that would leave the gods. And- <laughs> she was a disco queen. So she, you know, she, she had some fun. She burned some brain cells. And my tip, my tip for everybody is, and I discovered this a couple of years ago, my brother and I, we get a hotel room for Christmas and, you know, it's Christmas Eve where you have Christmas story on and we're having drinks and stuff and it's getting really late. And my brother's like, are you going to wrap all those right now? And I go, oh, hold on a second. So... What I did was grab duct tape and I fucking each present, right? It takes five minutes to fucking wrap the presents if you just do some duct tape around it. And then when I hand them off to my family, they can't fucking open them. (laughs) (laughs) So for like, I slow everything up because they're, you know, and then at one point I I brought an exacto knife and (laughs) said, use this. So if anybody's pressed for time and you're listening to this, use duct tape. And just wow. messily do it. There's no there's no rhyme or reason. You know? Yeah, I saw a guy uh, using cling wrap that was colored. You can buy red and green okay. packing cling wrap that they use in warehouses. Yeah. And he was just <laughs> cling wrap. Yeah. <laughs> if you cling wrap it enough, it becomes opaque. Oh, I was going to say it's see-through. But yeah, if you do enough. Oh. So he was just wrapping kids' toys. I mean, he wrapped 11 items in like less than 30 seconds. It was crazy. I was like, wow. Well, I thought and the duct tape have- thing was tape. good. In a way, they're both good because they stick to themselves. So you don't really have to use tape for it because it is tape. Jason, do you remember the shrink wrap machine at the comic book store in the back? Oh, I utilized the fuck out of that, Stuffy. Yeah. 
because <laughs> at that time renting games wasn't a thing at Blockbuster. So yeah, I'd pay fifty bucks for a Turbo Graphics game and it sucked. So I would take that package and go to the comic store and shrink wrap it and return it. I didn't know you did that. That's funny. Oh my god, yeah. I just remember the smell of the melting plastic when you'd go to like cut the ends off and then you blow dry it or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Steffi and I worked at a, at a comic book store and it was glorious. We would play death metal and we'd play like fucking crazy shit and just freak everybody out when they came into comic book store. Or we would play uh, Sade. We would really mix it up in there. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder why I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> Shade and death metal that is like two we were all, all over and then they would play uh the star wars movies like on a real all day long. yeah at one point the manager was like get the fuck out of here <laughs> he fired me <laughs> <laughs> i want to go back to pranks because you did talk about you pranking your brother yeah well, i have a prank I, I don't know if you guys will think this is funny but my brother tim who's my youngest brother when he was uh very little he would get excited for Christmas and would be building up to Christmas Day. It would be like maybe two weeks away. And we did this a couple times with him, but it was Jessica, my sister Jessica and I. So we had this idea of like, let's wrap stuff in the house and put it underneath the Christmas tree and then wake him up out of his nap. You know how little kids have their naps? Yeah. And we'll tell him Santa came early and you have to open up these presents, you know, like Santa came early. So we wrapped up dictionaries and Bibles. <laughs> Pots and pans. Just pots and pans, <laughs> boxes of random things that had no value. <laughs> and we piled it underneath the Christmas tree. It looked like an amazing Christmas <laughs> display of like humongous amounts of presents. That's so mean. And he was taking his nap when both Jess and I ran in. We're like, Tim, wake up, wake up. He's like, what? What's going on? Like, Santa came early. You have to come out and see this. And be like, what? What? And he would get all excited. He'd run. And he'd just start ripping open gifts and then be like, a dictionary. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and then you finally get like, we totally just mess with him, you know? We did that to him about two times and he fell for it a second time. I don't know. <laughs> That's so mean. <laughs> At least That's you didn't so get mean. slapped across the mouth for it, though. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys ever spot Santa in your house putting down presents late at night or think you saw Santa? There was one particular time when I was about six or seven like we were saying you can't sleep right and i went out to look at the presents at like three in the morning and then i heard something behind me and i i look and i can see the hallway and then the kitchen and off the kitchen was my parents room and when i turned around i saw the leg of somebody like dip into my parents room and i went holy shit that was fucking santa but really <laughs> But really, it was my dad. What is he doing up? He was listening to fucking Steely Dan and smoking a cigarette, and he had to get out of there. So for the longest time, I thought that was Santa. Yeah. Yeah. How about you guys? I never had a Santa experience, but I swore I saw an elf in my window. But I think it was just <laughs> the ice crystals. I think the ice crystals were forming in my window, and I had that, like, what do you call it? Pareidolia. Pareidolia. <laughs> So it was like a frosted elf. Yeah, it was a frosted elf. <laughs> he was he was hanging out in the igloos that they they carved from the snow plows. I never saw Santa, but I did see the Easter Bunny. I did see the Easter Bunny go across. I don't know if I was having a fever or tripping or what, but I saw it, and it, it looked like a person in an Easter Bunny suit too. That's what was crazy, and they were walking what? across the living, room. and they stopped and they looked at me and they held their finger up to their mouth like. <laughs> oh, of course. And I was freaking out, man. I kept telling my mother over and over, I saw the Easter Bunny. And she was like, <laughs> You're just a little kid and you don't know what you're talking about. But I know I saw it to this day. <laughs> but weirdly enough, that year, you know, that Easter, I had found candy all over the house. So I really don't think it was my dad. I don't, my dad wasn't the type that would go out and rent a costume and do all that. My dad wasn't. So I, I don't know what the hell I saw, but I Holy saw the crap. Easter Bunny. And the Easter Bunny's pretty scary. I think he outdoes Santa. I used to have an Uncle Tommy that was from Italy that would dress up as Santa and come over to our house. Which didn't seem like Santa Claus to me at the time. I don't think I believed it. I just thought it was my Uncle Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, ho, ho, ho. What are you fucking doing, Uncle Tommy? <laughs> I got pictures of him. He don't look like Santa. He looks like an Italian Santa. 
He's got a big schnuzzle. Oh, schnuzzle. <laughs> got a cannoli sticking out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> what are we Whoa. doing here? Pretty What's your guys' favorite Christmas dinners? Oh, Christmas dinners. Hmm. I'll have to think on that. Steph asked me this earlier, and I, I went with a lasagna. With some garlic bread and an garlic. anapasto. <laughs> Mine is just Christmas breakfast, and we still do yes. it to this day. Unfortunately, they make everybody get up really fucking early, which means my brother and I are partying in the hotel room, wrapping presents and duct tape at like fucking four in the morning. And we have to be there at eight. And they're making, I mean, it's French toast, it's its eggs and bacon and uh, sausages and all, uh, hash browns and everything. Yeah, it's uh, Christmas breakfast, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We do that before the presents. And by the time we get to the presents, I don't give a shit because as you get older, you just want a nice meal. And yeah, the Christmas breakfast is amazing. Yeah. We don't really do anything for dinner, but the breakfast is enough. Yeah, I'd go with that. I think my mother always, I think she made a turkey or a ham on Christmas, but recently it's been Christmas breakfast. We do like the Italian, like the panettone. I don't know if you ever had that. And we would make it into like French toast, have eggs or bacon or whatever. But yeah, it's been more, at least recently in the past like decade or so, like Christmas breakfast. breakfast. Yeah. 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 My favorite Christmases were always the ones where we'd gather after with our friends and we'd play our games. Remember, Jay, we'd play our gambling games. Sometimes, you know, yeah. obviously we'd do it with your family. Your family would be on, in on that. So you had to bring your Christmas money with you. because Oh, yeah. It. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's fantastic. All night, you know, all night. Dice, cards, you know, yep. drinks, food. Your mom would whip up some uh, fried dough for us. Oh, oh yeah. man, yeah, that's great. Take everybody's yep. fucking money. Bring your Christmas money because it's going to be gone. It's going to be mine. And he did win all the time. It seemed like you and Maggie would win and wipe us all out. Maggie was lucky. Yeah, she would win. She'd win a good amount. Yeah, you know yep. that leprechaun blood of hers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Jason, tell us about when you found out that Santa Claus wasn't real. How old were you, and what was the situation? It was about fourth or fifth grade, and. Before school started, you know, you're in homeroom and, you know, you'd be talking with your mates and shit. I remember there's a particular year where people were just, there were whispers like, Santa's not real. I remember being like, what? There's no way, you know, like it's, and then I started piecing it together and my other friends would be like, yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, Santa's not real. And uh, it wasn't a particular blunt time. It was uh, like a, a bunch of little, little things that led up to the realization that Santa wasn't real and that kind of sucks because you hope that there's magic in the world and when you yeah. find out santa's not real it just kind of kills that a bit you know for sure yeah that was what about yeah. you Steph? yeah it was kind of traumatic for me because i really wholeheartedly believed in santa like he was like god basically or like just underneath god you know <laughs> um saint nicholas was yeah. below god yeah like he's just a notch below god he's basically a saint um I was probably in the second grade, I'm guessing, maybe third at the most, but so I was really young and I wish that it didn't happen at the time. And it's really my sister Jessica's fault, but she found the key to one of our storage closets in the house. And I bumped into her going through the closet and I was like, how'd you get the key? She's like, I found it. And then she's like, look, and she's showing me a wrapped Christmas presents that say like two stuff from Santa, two Jess from Santa, two Brian from Santa. I wasn't connecting it. I'm like, how did Santa get his gifts? You know, like a week or two ahead of Christmas time in our closet. Wasn't getting it. She's like, no mom and dad are santa he's not real and i burst out in tears like someone just told me my parents died i hugged jessica and i said well at least we have the easter bunny like i was so <laughs> devastated <laughs> and she hugged me and I, she I, she gave me like a pity hug like uh i'm not gonna tell you about that <laughs> this brings yeah. up so many things like santa would bring the mother load on the night but they would put presents under the tree just to start filling it up. And what I used to do, and this is a fucking rotten thing, but I would tear a strategic part <laughs> of the present that I could retape. So I would kind of see what they were. I would mm. tell if it was a toy or, you know, whatever. But uh, yeah, I used to do shit like that. I used to fucking tear open the present a little bit. <laughs> my mom would hand me the present and I'd be thinking in my head, I know what this is. 
we did what you did, Jason. We go and find our presence in the closet and strategically tear. Yeah. Sometimes we even slip our finger in and grab, like if there was a little chocolate or something in there, we could grab one <laughs> out and eat it before Christmas and then wrap it back up. Well, that's like after I knew there wasn't a Santa. So I was basically dictating to my mom, all right, we're going to go to the store and I'm going to pick out this for my Christmas present. basically. Because I was like, I'm not going to pretend this is a big secret and I have to wait and see if I get it if I'm good. Yeah. It was like, all right, you now I know you're going to spend this amount of money on me. We're going to the store now, and I'm going to pick out what I really want. That's it. <laughs> Which yep. sounds like a very snobbish little girl's attitude, but basically Jessica ruined it. But I can't tell you the time I fucked up a really major present for my dad. It's not really funny. But I think that was about the time I started smoking weed, and <laughs> it was like 16, 17. And um, it's Christmas Eve. And my dad took off to go get my mom a present. And I was decorating a tree, putting tinsel on so my cat can swallow it and we have to pull it out of its ass. My mom goes, where'd your dad go? And I went, I'm decorating the tree, so I'm not really thinking. And I go, oh, he went to go get a ring. And she was like, what ring? And I went, uh-oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Christmas happens and my mom <laughs> opens the present and it's a ring. And she probably had to act like she was surprised. And, uh, yeah, that's one thing I really regret now <laughs> because my dad didn't, <laughs> you know, dad's never fucking, you know, whenever you got presents, it was your, always your mom's writing on the present, yeah. like love Santa, like that bubbly, beautiful yep. <laughs> chick writing, you know, and, yep. and, uh, I fucked it up for my dad, man, big time, but he never knew, but, oh, well, uh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think he could detect what was happening. A lot of Christmases just revolved around dysfunction i think there was a lot of dysfunctional families but i think maybe that's what makes the christmases memorable well that's all like that the dis- movie national lampoon's christmas vacation was about like the whole dysfunctional trying family. to make a perfect christmas and it never works out <laughs> that might be why it's my favorite film i don't yeah. know christmas film <laughs> oh it's great it is yeah it beats out home alone in my opinion but i'm home from alone a di- is funny but i love yeah i love christmas vacation or whatever yeah yeah beck and i are at the mall and we're kids and zombie santa steph is there and we both sit on her lap and we tell zombie santa steph what we want for christmas so- santa how are you doing today why is there rot around your mouth <laughs> yeah. santa's scary he's scary santa back. are you okay you be quiet <laughs> tell me just tell me, Dungo. Hey, is Santa smelling you weirdly, Jason? I don't smell. You smell. <laughs> Children smell bad. Me smell good, like rotten flesh. Okay, Santa, uh, I would like some Legos and a light bright and a pony. My little pony. <laughs> I gave you light bright. That's it. Go now. <laughs> But 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 Santa, I I I want the new He-Man figure, and and I want some some Tinker toys. Can you can you hook me up? One He-Man, you go now. Get off my lap <laughs> I now. Like, I don't like this Santa. Ugh. One He-Man. Why is his jaw falling off? I know eat today. <laughs> Santa, why are you pulling at my arm? Juicy like KFC. Me eat you. Hurry and go before I eat all of you. I get you He-Man. I get you Light Bright. Go now. One of the questions we had on our list was our favorite Christmas songs. You talked about which one you hated, but what is... Yes, I fucking have a favorite. Are you ready? It's by Jorge Miguel, Last Christmas. (laughs) Never heard of it. That's George Michael. Wait a minute. (laughs) Jorge. You got us. Whoa. (laughs) Yeah, it's the best Christmas song. It's from the 80s, and it just makes me happy. And A friend of mine, young girl, she came up with a song for that. You know, it was Last Christmas, It Gave You My Heart. So she goes, last Christmas, I gave you my fart, but the very next day, it <laughs> faded away. <laughs> I love that. I, th- I think about that all the time. That's as far as the song went, too. She was so little. That's, that's as far as the song went. <laughs> What's yours, Beck? Uh, I like uh, Christmas wrapping by the waitresses. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. What about you? Do you ever hear of the Clancy Brothers? It's an Irish No, group? no. Oh, they go way back. 
They go way back. Way back. Back into the 1950s, I think. Before my time. But they have a song called Sing We the Virgin Mary. You can get it on YouTube. And they have this little art show with it. Like this little paper. Stop animation. Yeah, like stop animation. Oh, it's so good. And it reminds me of like, every time I watch it, it makes me have that Christmassy feeling that I had when I was a kid. So that's why I love it so much. It's nothing you'd hear on the radio. I grew up with the Clancy Brothers. You know, I love that. I gotta, I gotta get that one. I, I forget that. Which one? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. Steph, I, I, I have something to tell you. What? All right, where begins the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, one day I was saw a, 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 <laughs> what? One day I oh. saw a bag <laughs> at the bottom of my driveway near my mailbox. Yeah. And I went to get the mail and I was like, what is this garbage? Some asshole threw some garbage on my lawn. Uh huh. And I look in the bag and it's two bottles of vodka. <laughs> this driveway? Yes. You didn't save it from like years ago? No. And it was sealed. They were brand new. I cracked one open. I smelled it. I poured it on my hands. I was like, yeah, that's vodka. <laughs> and I want you to know that you've been drinking driveway vodka. <laughs> Hey, I saw you drink it with me. So yeah. you no, know, you wouldn't try to poison, <laughs> no. my, poison yourself. If you die, I'm dying with you, sister. Yeah, you're not dead. <laughs> well, this one I cracked open fresh, so the other one is yeah. open. So I basically opened a fresh. Yeah. Who the heck would give you vodka, like, or just leave it, like some? That's. I thought you threw it out the window trying to get away from the cops or something. <laughs> or her, a, her AA fucking, uh, you know, counselors. <laughs> her sponsors were after her. Yeah. <laughs> Off the bag. I don't know where it came from. I was like, Merry Christmas. I put it in the liquor shelf. Oh the other one that was open, that I opened. So both of How them. How many were... years ago is that? I don't, this just happened oh, like a few just days happened. ago. I thought it was like years ago. <laughs> no, it was at the end of my driveway. Like Christmas this, presents of vodka. This vodka is, is made in Rochester. What's the brand? Recipe, Recipe 21. 21. That's the fucking brand? Yeah, and it's in plastic. It's not like it's uh, glass. It's not, but... Yeah, it's not high end. It's four times distilled, made out oh, of but Rochester. It's good. it's good though. It's a small, a little small bottle. like flask type bottle. Yeah. Hey, what but doesn't I... kill you makes you stronger, or it gives you arthritis because that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> it's potato. It's potato. You're gonna wake up blind tomorrow. This is not potatoes. It's, it's made a... from potatoes. This is grain vodka. I saw it on there. Well, Steph, I wanted you to know about my driveway vodka. <laughs> that's a miracle where I'm coming from. It's that's like finding fantastic. a bag. A long time ago, a friend of mine was walking at Beaver Lake Nature Center, and he found a huge paper bag full of marijuana in the woods. Yeah. And he took it. Yeah. I mean, a huge paper bag. <laughs> like the grocery bag style. And he's like, I Holy figured this shit. was a gift from God. Yeah. Like, where the heck did this come from? Like, why was this at Beaver Lake, which is like the most gentle, like non-druggy place, you know, yeah. you can think of. Because that's the exact place you'd want to smoke a big paper yeah. bag full of weed. Watch the beavers. <laughs> I found a, I found a balloon, like a black balloon full of cocaine in my backyard. This has shifted quite a bit from yeah. Christmas. <laughs> what? That's what you got to leave for Santa, man. <laughs> We've got balloons of cocaine. <laughs> Bags from God of marijuana and <laughs> and driveway vodka. But Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bam, 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 bam. We're going to do a mega mix. Bam, 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 bam. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Jason, we want to thank you for being our guest on the show on our bonus Xmas episode. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Thank our, you so much. Our favorite guest. We're definitely going to have our bonus guest more often. Actually, maybe every major holiday. And uh, <laughs> happy holidays to our listeners. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Merry Merry. What else? Anything am I missing? Uh, uh, just... I think that's it. <laughs> okay. And uh, Jason, is there anything you want to say before we, we close? It'll be great to get rid of this year and move on. Yeah. All right. Happy New Year. <laughs> to the
the spirit podcast supernatural science in the I'm ghost psychic mystic spirit divine source heaven the dead magic magic